Oh boy, this level. This is the worst level in the game. This is easily the worst mission that they have. Aside from the mission, the extra mission of this, where you have to extinguish all the blue torches. Again, there's no reason they should be doing this. How does this help Eggman at all? If they need to do this to exit the level, then why didn't every other team need to do this? Did they go through this level chronologically first? Does that doesn't make any sense because they take so long to beat their missions that if they went through the levels first, then, then you'd think that they would very quickly end up being behind all the other teams because all the other teams, especially Team Rose, finished the levels before them. So that doesn't make any sense. Like if they're supposed to be the ones beating the level first, and that's why the other teams are able to beat the level without blowing out torches, then this level takes over 14 minutes on your first try. Seven and a half minutes for a good rank when you know what you're doing. So yeah, this is the third time that I had to look up a guide for this game because I didn't know where I missed two torches. Yay! Another flip panel that you need to outright fly to actually see. Here we go. It flung me to my death. Ready. But yeah, again, why did it start spinning when you have a thunder shot? When you, when, you, when you have a thunder shot, it. I mean, you can't thunder shoot it while it's spinning. It just wastes your time. Well, I, I, I flew nowhere near it. Why did it start spinning? I mean, I can understand sort of you flying into it and that spins it, but it just seems arbitrary. This is the level that made me grow to really hate Mystic Mansion's theme for how repetitive I thought it was. Because I don't know if it really does have the dynamic music thing going on where it only plays the exciting parts during exciting parts of the level. I missed those two torches because I got distracted by these torches that were right ahead of me. And guess what? When I replayed this level on the GameCube, Here we go. I missed the exact Here same torches. Or at the very least, I missed the torches that were ahead of them. So yeah, that really just that really goes to show you how big of a problem it is. You you seem to have torches that blend into each other with the fire, and so you miss out on them. Not only do you have to tediously tornado every single red torch, but you also have to deal with forced combat. The one time I tried to legitimately fight that giant hammer robot on the GameCube, I actually got hit during my stun animation again by its hammer and died during my stun animation. Which is the definition of cheap and the reason why I don't bother trying to fight them legitimately, even though you can. This level, it's just a tedious slog. Technically, you can, like a cool thing you can do with Espio is you can actually air dash past the torches and that'll actually, like if you're leveled up, you can air dash past them. Just air dashing past them with high enough levels will put them out. You don't need to stop and tornado them every single time, which is especially glaring because the tornado range on Espio is so shit. Make it especially frustrating that you need to do this tornado heavy mission with Espio. What were they thinking? Here we go. But yeah, there's an extra mission for this where you have to put out all the blue torches. Here we go. And that becomes especially horrible in one particular room where you have to rely on the turning white rails that turn you 90 degree angles and you move really fast on them and they lead you to bottomless pits and you're expected to jump on them and tornado blue torches on, on them it's really cheap easily the worst missions in the game are the extra missions of Team Chaotix I've noticed for what little I play the extra missions of Team Sonic, they're just get to the goal ring in under five minutes. Which can... I've, I've never bothered yet with all of them because they're such... Like, 
The level length of this game can easily go over five minutes, even for Team Sonic, so I don't understand how... Like, I hope they increase the limit for for certain levels, like Casino Park. Because I've never beaten all of them in under five minutes, and I probably never will. Even with codes. That's how long they are. Charmy can actually sting people with his stinger. Like, he can sting enemies with his stinger, and that's his solo attack. It's a melee attack, so I guess it doesn't have much range and isn't very reliable. The weird thing is, when bees sting you, they lose their stinger and they die. So how the hell does Charmy survive that? He must be a really super bee. Not to mention the fact that most bees are female, the ones that you see they're female. Like, that's generally true for any insect species that have a queen. The males are just used for sex, basically. So, Charmy being a male and a bee is kind of weird. At least it is unique having, having like, Charmy be a bee. Team Chaos is the only team without a hedgehog or even any kind of mammal in this game. Since Vector and Espy are reptiles and Charmy's an insect. So that's unique at least, but I don't think it was worth it putting them as a mandatory part of the game, when they could've just been a bonus gameplay style for you to play when you're done. But instead they decided to arbitrarily make them search for stuff to pad out the game even more. I couldn't see that because it was so above the ground. I had to actively think to fly around in order to see it. And the camera's horrible here. You can't control the camera here at all. At least it hands you a huge amount of torches, but it's not like the torches respawn as you move a, as you move in a circle. So you can't take advantage of that to easily cheese the mission, like would be awesome. And again, because the camera's so bad, you can only turn around while you're flying. And it would be a lot more of a problem if I wasn't using codes because you can't fly forever. So you'd have to constantly land. And even then, you're so high above the doors that you can't really see they're open anyways, even when you're flying. Like, from this camera angle, I can't really tell which of the doors is open. And you need to hit the flip panel that was above the ground that the camera wasn't showing you in order to progress in the first place. I almost ran past that because, because of the camera angle. Like, this is just padding. Why couldn't I just go into the room to begin with? Like, it's just a room full of doors, and only one of them opens. What's the point? Other characters do mention a room full of doors, but it's only Team Chaotix that goes through that room. I'll, t I'll talk more a bit about that later. But yeah, this isn't a very good mission. In Final Fortress with Team Chaotix, well... The mission is kind of, it seems to connect to what you have to do to save Eggman, which is a shocker. But in the last cutscene, let's just say that all that is rendered pointless. I'll talk more about that later. See, in SA2, you would grind on rails at, in City Escape that were on staircases. And that made sense. This is the only time you do that in this game, past SA2. Like, in most Sonic games, the, the rail grinding is not on staircases like this. And grinding on rails on staircases makes a lot more sense than just having rails be there for no reason. But yeah, I don't really like a lot of rooms in this place. I don't like the room with a lot of cracked walls and most of the cracks don't really lead to anything useful. It would be great if every single cracked wall gave you a torch. Not that it even makes sense that torches would be hidden behind cracked walls to begin with. Isn't the whole point of cracks? Isn't the whole point of torches in a level to like light up the place? Why would they be hidden? There's three major problems with having to look for these torches aside from how tedious it is hitting every single one and blowing them away. One, the, the torches are too high up, so it's easy to overlook them. Two, the camera is not really focusing on them all that well, and that's mainly because they're such a natural part of the level's aesthetic. 
And you never really had to do anything with them as any other team. So, it's very easy to overlook them and completely forget that you have to be putting all of them out. And so you go completely past them. That's basically the big reason why it's so easy to overlook these torches. And again, there are exactly 60 red torches in the level. So if you miss any of them, you have to go through the entire level again. Guess what I had to do? I was over 14 minutes in when I had the level loop on me for the first time. I put the game down and didn't play it again for two days. And of course, because it was on an emulator, I could just go back to my save state when I finally did decide to revisit the game. So it's not like I had to put out any of those torches again. But you wouldn't have that luxury on the actual hardware. Yeah, this room, this is the room that really gives you trouble in the extra mission. And I deliberately backtracked here because I didn't want to miss any torches. I didn't want to break any cracked wall. I didn't want to miss breaking any cracked walls. What's the point of having five rings there? I mean, it doesn't really give you that much Team Blast energy anyways. And, like, I almost missed these torches because the camera was too busy focusing on the walls to show me these torches. And here you have to go under an anvil, and I'm going under it multiple times, and only now does it decide to fall. It just, it feels so cheap that you have to rely on it to progress, because it falls so quickly. It just makes, it's anxiety inducing. But yeah, imagine trying to do the extra mission of this, and you have to stand next to the blue torches and carefully jump. And you can't be the flying formation and then just switch in midair to the speed type and do a tornado attack. So you'd have to be taking the risk of grinding on the rails with the speed type character and moving really fast and constantly, unless you constantly jump over the turners, you'll constantly be turning directions you don't want to go and going past the, the blue torches. Maybe I'll do the mission someday, but look at this. If you didn't believe me when I said it took over 14 minutes before the level even looped on me, it's 11 minutes in now, and I'm not even done yet. The final boss of the game is shiny blue in the PC version, but every other version of the game has it be normal blue. It makes more sense for it to be shiny blue because well, as I've spoiled a million times, it's Metal Sonic, so it's going to be a uh, robot, so of course it's going to be blue. Omega is the only character that really makes sense having the shininess, because Omega is a, a robot. Same goes for Sonic Adventure DX. Gamma made sense to have him be shiny. See, this looks cool, taking advantage of Espio's abilities. To go to jump through a huge laser grid straight out of a jewel museum. Do jewel museums actually have like a huge amount of invisible lasers? Do jewel thieves actually have like magical spray that magically makes the lasers visible and and lower themselves into it with the with a pulley that I'm not sure how they'd be able to get. Like I'm not sure you'd be able to buy that in the store. What kind of floor is this anyways? It looks all staticky. I mean, it's good for the atmosphere because it's a ghostly area. See, I was overjoyed at coming here first, even though I don't really like the white background. It looks really weird and too bright. But like, I was happy coming here because I thought that it would hand me the last torches. But I was enraged to find out that the torches here are the only ones. Not to mention the torches almost blend into the white background because they're bright and you can't even see it! See? They're, they're bright and the background is bright. So great aesthetic design there. And in the in the blue torches mission you have to fly all around that room and fly up on the high platforms in order to find every single blue torch. So good luck if you don't know to do that. It makes sense that that door closed because that's not the way forward. Like, if you were allowed to go through it, wouldn't you just be backtracking to Hang Castle? 
But still, it just feels annoying. What's the point of having that door be open if you can't go through it? Go. Why would it open when you haven't... I mean, you respawned into level, but it's not like you... You respawned above the door. Why would the door unlock? See, this chandelier has red torches. Why can't I just put out these torches and have it count? I don't even know if... I don't know where exactly I'd be expected to stand to do the tornado so that it reaches the torches because the chandelier is so high up. Is it chandelier or chandelier? I don't really know. The speed characters lack the falling animation in the PC version. And they only lose rings, making it harder to defeat them in team battles. This also allows for breaking some go. laser field blocks as well. Some glitches aren't actually in the PC go. port, like the Team Blast glitch, which go. I honestly can't imagine playing the game without. That's how vital it is to the combat of this game. I feel sorry for people who play this game and don't know that glitch exists, or played the awful PC port that doesn't have it. I mean, they are starting to make level mods for the PC port finally, Impossible. but it's not like you can get the PC port Ultimate on Steam. You have to somehow find a disc of the PC version, which I tried and couldn't find. And that's right, Mystic Mansion took so long all by itself that it took an entire part all by itself. That's insane.